In this video, we will be discussing acid-base titrations, what they are, and how we do calculations for them. So before we get into an acid-base titration, consider the following reaction, where you're asked to determine the products of the reaction and identify the acid-base pairs. In the following reaction, we have sodium hydroxide reacting with hydrochloric acid. We know this is a double displacement reaction, and we can predict um, we can predict the products of those reactants. You might recall from grade 10 chemistry that when you have an acid and a base reacting, our products are always going to be a salt and water, so we can easily predict what our products will be. So our hydrogen, in this case, is going to switch partners with that chloride and will join up with the hydroxide, sodium and chlorine will join together. So the products of our reaction will be that water. For indicating the state of water, because it's pure water that we deal with, we use a lowercase l. Our other product, also in this case, is going to be sodium chloride in that aqueous state. We are also asked to identify the acid-base pairs. In the following reaction, hydrochloric acid is obviously acting like the acid because it is donating a proton. Sodium hydroxide is acting as our base because it is capable of accepting that proton from the acid. On the other side of our reaction, should this reaction happen in reverse, the water will act as our conjugate acid and sodium chloride will act as the conjugate base. So in the following acid-base reactions, if we know the concentration and volume of sodium hydroxide, and we know the volume of hydrochloric acid, we can actually use this to determine the concentration of the acid. And we can determine that concentration based on our reaction from our balanced equation. And this is at the heart of what we'll get at with acid-base titrations. So one thing to remember, and a thing to note as well, is that with any strong acid, when we dilute it, diluting doesn't reduce the strength of the acid, just reduces its concentration. Remember that strength comes from whether or not it dissociates completely the acid. And concentration tells us how many um, hydronium ions or protons there are in the solution. So remember that with a strong acid, it will dissociate 100%. Um, whereas a weak acid does not always dissociate. So when we dilute a strong acid, we're still going to have 100% dissociation. We're just going to change the concentration of those hydronium ions. And remember from yesterday, we talked about pH, that power of hydrogen. Just remember that with every um, water can essentially react with itself. So two water molecules can actually um, react with itself. So two molecules will collide together to form hydronium ions and hydroxide ions. Recall that in pure water, concentration of hydronium ions um, is going to be equal to the concentration of hydroxide ions. And we can actually calculate what that is. And it's approximately 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7 moles per liter. If you were to determine the pH of this concentration, you'd actually find that you would get a pH of 7, or um, a pH for a neutral solution. 
Um, when we're calculating pH, remember that it is the negative log of the concentration of hydronium ions in solution. The following equation, um, we won't deal with um, too much, but um, this tells you how you can figure out the concentration of hydronium ions if you're given pH of a solution. And if you're not sure how to plug this in, don't worry about it, we can discuss it later. So acid-base titrations, what are they? Well, all acid-base reactions occur because of a proton transfer. So that proton transfer occurs from the acid going to the base. A titration involves the neutralization of an acid or a base. Remember that the reaction is a double displacement reaction and all acid-base reactions will produce a salt and water. So we can generalize that in the following equation where we have an acid plus a base which is a salt plus water. Remember when we say salt we are talking about an ionic compound. So we are going to have a positively charged ion we're going to have a negatively charged ion. What we use these titrations for is to determine the concentration of an acidic solution by adding, by putting in, measured amounts of a basic solution of known concentration. So we can use this to figure out the concentration of an acid if we don't know what it is by using the concentration of a basic solution. Um, by using a basic solution of known concentration. So acid-base titrations, just some terminology that we will need to know. When we're talking about the solution of known concentration, this is what we refer to as the titrant. So when we talk about the titrant, it's the thing that we know the concentration of. It's generally going to be our base. And within a titration, we'll always reach a point where all the acid and all the base has reacted and has been converted into salt and water. This is a special point and what we ultimately aim for in our titrations and what we refer to as the equivalence point. So at that equivalence point we can basically say moles of acid is equal to moles of base. Or the other way we can say that is that our moles of hydronium ions is equal to our moles of hydroxide ions. With any titration, we have to know when we've hit that equivalence point. And we use an indicator to tell us when we have reached that point where moles of acid is equal to moles of base. We use different chemicals to tell us when this has occurred. And we use these different chemicals because generally they will be one color in an acidic solution. And when we hit that equivalence point, um, they will change color um, into a different color in a base. So some common examples of indicators include things like blue litmus, red litmus, phenolphthalein, bromothymol blue. For the titrations that we will do, um, we will use phenolphthalein um, for our titrations, for a lot of our titrations. So phenolphthalein as an indicator, um, when it's added in to an acid, it is going to be a clear colorless solution. Now when you add in enough base um, that everything is neutralized, it will become a pink color in a basic solution. So we get a nice clear color in acid, nice pink color in a basic solution. Very easy to tell when that color change has occurred and tells us nicely when that equivalence point has been reached. When we're dealing with acid-based titrations, we do have some special equipment that we deal with. We use a burette, which is this giant skinny tube here which contains our base within it. Now within that burette there are graduation markings that can tell us 
volume of base that we have within it. And it can tell us ultimately the volume of base that we have added to our acid solution. So our acid solution, we usually keep in an Erlenmeyer flask, that's a jar, it'll usually be in an Erlenmeyer flask with phenolphthalein in it. When that solution is acidic, it will be clear. Once we've added enough base in to reach that equivalence point, that solution will turn pink, and that will tell us that all of our acid has reacted with base. This is at the heart of our titrations. We'll discuss this more when you guys actually start doing titrations. So after titration has been formed, you've collected all the data, you then need to figure out um, the concentration of your unknown, um, the unknown concentration of your acid. So there are a few steps to doing titrations calculations, um, all of which you would have seen before, but we're just going to apply it now to acid-base reactions. So step one, first thing that you want to do is write the balanced chemical equation for the reaction. This will involve some stoichiometry, so you do want to make sure that it is balanced, that reaction. So next thing that you want to do is calculate the moles of the titrant. And basically, you're calculating the number of moles of the thing that you have both volume and concentration. Make sure that you are careful of units. Sometimes volume will be given to you in milliliters. You will need to convert it into liters. Third step in acid-base titrations in those calculations is from the balanced equation, you want to find the mole ratio of unknown um, standard solution and the unknown solution. So that standard solution is what you just calculated moles for. In the fourth step, you then want to use the mole ratio to calculate the moles of the unknown reactant. In this case, the moles of acid that you'll have. And the last step then that you want to do is calculate the concentration of that acid using um, our concentration equation. The volume that you're generally going to use is, uh, of course, the volume of that acid solution. And it would be the volume of the acid in the Erlenmeyer flask, or in the jar, or whatever is given to you in the question. Again, you might need to be careful with the units. So let's run through a couple example questions of acid-base titrations. So we have a chemistry student that titrates 100 milliliters of hydrochloric acid of unknown concentration, and this is titrated with a 0.25 mole per liter solution of sodium hydroxide. She determines that 40 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide solution will neutralize the acid. What is the concentration of the hydrochloric acid? So a lot of information given within these questions. Um, best way to navigate these questions is take a second, write out what's given. So in this case, we're given information for the hydrochloric acid. We're told that it's a volume of 100 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. So for the HCl, we know our volume is going to be 100.0 milliliters. Within the question, we're also given information about the sodium hydroxide solution. We're told that the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution is 0.25 moles per liter. And that 40 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide solution was used to neutralize the acid. So in this case, it'll be 40 0.0 milliliters of sodium hydroxide 
we need to convert that into liters, which will be 0 0.04 liters. So ultimately within this question, we're being asked, what is the concentration of hydrochloric acid? So we need to figure out that concentration. Now, this is the point where I warned you that you may be tempted to use C1V1 because you have a C, a V, a C, and another V. Don't use C1V1. Um, in this case, it will give you the correct answer, but it's not the correct steps to follow. Remember, C1V1 is only used for diluting a solution. Second thing that we're going to do is write out that balance um, reaction that occurs between sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. So we have hydrochloric acid, sodium hydroxide. This will react to give us water and salt. So we have our H2O plus our salt, which will be sodium chloride. Very conveniently, everything is balanced. We don't need to add in any coefficients. Next thing that we're going to do is determine the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that we have. Since we have both a concentration and a volume, we can figure out how many moles we're dealing with. So number of moles of sodium hydroxide is going to be equal to um, the concentration, which we know is 0.25 moles per liter, times the volume, which is 0 0.0400 liters. In terms of number of moles, this will give us Point zero 0.01 moles of sodium chloride. Next thing that we're going to do then, now that we have number of moles of um, sodium hydroxide, is we're going to do a mole ratio to figure out the number of moles of hydrochloric acid that we have. So setting up our mole ratios in the way we've done before, we know that we have 0 0.01 moles of sodium hydroxide. From our balanced chemical equation, we know that we have, we need one mole of sodium hydroxide. We're trying to figure out how many moles of sodium of hydrochloric acid have reacted. And from our balanced chemical equation, we know that if we have one mole of sodium hydroxide reacting, this will react with one mole of uh, hydrochloric acid. So very conveniently, it is a one-to-one -one reaction. No calculator required. We get um, the number of moles of hydrochloric acid um, being 0 0.01 moles. Once we have the number of moles of hydrochloric acid figured out, Next thing that we want to do is then figure out the concentration of hydrochloric acid. This is where we come back to our C equals N divided by V. So we just calculated the number of moles of hydrochloric acid to be 0 0.01 moles, HCl. And the volume of hydrochloric acid, we're told in the question, is 100 milliliters. So we are going to divide that by 0.1 liters. This will give us a concentration of 0 0.100 moles per liter. If we include sig figs, we should have two significant digits in our answer. And this will give us a concentration of 0.10 
moles per liter. In the second example, we have, um, we're told that it takes 67 milliliters of 0.1 moles per liter sodium hydroxide to neutralize 100 milliliters of sulfuric acid. What is the concentration of the sulfuric acid? So once again, to help sort our information, we'll take a second to write out um, the information that's given to us. So for the sodium hydroxide, we're given a volume of 67 milliliters. Converting that into liters, we'll get 0 0.067 liters. We're also told our concentration is 0 0.10 moles per liter. For the sulfuric acid, that H2SO4, we're told the volume of sulfuric acid, in this case, is 100 milliliters. Converting that into liters, that is 0 0.100 liters. Um, now, next thing that we'll need to do is come up with a balanced chemical equation. So we have sodium hydroxide reacting with sulfuric acid. This is going to react to give us a salt plus water. <laughs> and in this case, so we will get water. And this will generate our salt, which is going to be Na2SO4, uh, sodium sulfate. And we need to ensure that our reaction is balanced. So we will need um, two moles of sodium hydroxide to react with one mole of sulfuric acid. This will generate one mole of uh, sodium sulfate and two moles of water in our reaction. All right, now that we have our balanced chemical reaction, next thing that we can do is find moles of sodium hydroxide. Um, so we have a concentration of sodium hydroxide. We have a volume of sodium hydroxide, so we can easily calculate those moles. So number of moles will be equal to the concentration, which is 0 0.10 moles per liter, times the volume that we have, the 0 0.067 liters. We end up getting um, number of moles being 0 0.067 moles of NaOH. Now that we have moles of sodium hydroxide, we can work to figure out how many moles of sulfuric acid we have. So we'll go ahead and do a mole ratio. So setting up our mole ratio, we have 0 0.0067 moles of sodium hydroxide. We're trying to figure out how many moles of sulfuric acid we're going to get from our balanced chemical equation we know that we need two moles of sodium hydroxide to react with one mole of sulfuric acid. When we solve for moles of sulfuric acid, we will get half the number of moles um, of that of sodium hydroxide. So that's 0 0.003355 three moles of H2SO4. And once we have the number of moles of sulfuric acid, the last step then is determining the concentration. So for our concentration, we come back to that C is equal to N divided by V. We now have number of moles of sulfuric acid. We also have a volume, so very easily we can figure out the concentration. So we take the number of moles at 0 0.00335 moles, 
we'll divide it by the 0.1 liters and we will get a concentration of 0 0.0335 moles per liter and incorporating sig figs into this so in our answer we should have two sig figs so we'll have point zero um, three four moles per liter all right that does it for titration calculations and titrations in general um, for practice please work on the attached titration practice worksheet answers are provided at the bottom